Hey guys, Stephen Cox here, and today we're going to try something totally different than we normally do. Um, I'm going to replace the rubber strings with these flat wound strings and kind of show you all the steps along the way that I'm going to take. So first thing we want to do is get at least one of these strings off, but in order to do that we have to get the back plate off. So I've got a screwdriver here. And um, this one's the right size. The other one wasn't the right size. And I'm just going to take off the back plate. And I'm going to scoop this down so that you can see a little bit more of what I'm doing. There we go. Okay. So how is everybody? I'm probably going to unplug it and turn it off so it doesn't make much noise. But you think, yeah. All right. So I know this is kind of a, um, you know, feel free to ask me questions along the way because some of these things are just going to be time consuming stuff. Hey, Seth, I'm glad that you're good. But basically I got a set of flat wound strings from Uke Republic and um, this is what I'm deciding to do with it. So we're hoping it doesn't break the, um, we're hoping it doesn't break the instrument. That's the goal. But um, basically, I've been wanting to have a fretless bass ukulele that has the F holes and the cutaway and everything, so it looks a lot like an upright bass. But um, but yeah, we're going to put the put the flat wound strings on. So basically, the reason I want that is because it's like a miniature version of an upright bass, in that I have flat wounds on the upright. So it's going to take a minute. It's going to be a very long drum roll if you do a drum roll, Seth. But I'm glad you made it to the um, live stream. All right. So has anybody else on here done any sort of modifications to their new bass or bass ukulele? This one's being a little more stubborn. Yeah, so on this model, this um, Muso, M-U-S-O-O -O or something, has six screws on the back plate instead of four. Not really sure why. Not really sure it's necessary. And it's a plastic back plate, which is kind of, um, I don't know, maybe what you'd expect for spending so little on an instrument. Okay, so now that I got the back plate off, I'm gonna take off one string and change one string at a time. And then we can go ahead and tell if it's just too much um, right away. And if not, my plan is to leave them on here for at least a week for um, and do a follow-up video where we can talk about if it um, worked or not. And can you guys hear me okay? No mods yet? Journeyman with round mountains. Cool. Yeah, sometimes it's kind of nice to not to not mess with a with a good thing, you know. All right, so slowly but surely, I'm loosening the string. I think I would have a string winder handy. I think I have one in the other room, but oh well. Here we are. This is why you prepare before you start your video or before you start doing mods, so that you don't have to spend extra time doing doing this. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Got it to the point where I can just do that. So now I'm gonna push this through. There we go. So that's kind of cool how they knot the ends. If you haven't seen the inside of a new base or anything, the um, the rubber strings or the, um, what are they called? Polyurethane strings, they, they do a knot so it doesn't come through. And hopefully on these strings, I'm thinking it's a ball end. I've changed them before and I think I remember it being um, a ball end instead of a, you know, instead of a knot. So, um, this base uke is, it was a kind of a no name brand. I mean, it has a sticker on it, but there's some that I've seen that don't have the sticker on it. The sticker is like J A C Q U E S jocks or something. But, um, but the site that I got it from, uh, the Amazon store was Muso. M-U-S-O-O. -O. So hopefully that kind of um, that kind of tells you. I, I, I want to put a link in the description for it, but uh, 
I just ran out of time. So maybe I'll maybe I'll add a link after filming this. If you don't see one, please leave me a comment um, after the video goes up and say, hey, you said you were going to put a link on there because it just means I forgot if, um, if it's not up there later on. Oh, cool, Novix. I'm glad you like... Glad that you liked the Sweet Child of Mine version. I didn't actually come up with the harmonic. Well, okay. I discovered that I could do it with harmonics and then looked on YouTube and found out that other people had also discovered that they could do it with harmonics before I had. So I thought it was a cool thing to share and a cool way to do it with a loop pedal. All right. So we got our strings and they're labeled. They come in nice little individual bags. We want the G. Here's the G. Make all the jokes you want. There is the flat wound G string. This looks really short. So the reason I'm thinking this will work is because when I compared this to the Journeyman, it uh, it looked like this was a shorter scale than the Journeyman. So I'm hoping I'm right about that and not being crazy, but that's the main reason I'm doing doing this. So let's see what happens. So then one of the one of the concerns is is this hole in the back of the body small enough to hold the ball end in? And the answer so far is yes. Now remember, this is the one that I used uh, where I had already cut the pickup, or sorry, already cut the saddle. So um, we just gotta make sure that we can do that. And uh, KR, you say, did those strings come with washers to slide over the string? I feel like the, um, let's see, I didn't see any washers, but that is a good call. They are supposed to, aren't they? Yep, they're still in, it's still in the bag. Good call. I'm going to add that. I'm going to put that back on there. Thanks for saying something. You're right. The flat ones do come with washers. Let's do that. Golly. All right. What would I do without you guys? You'd think I'd never done this before or something. All right. Yes, it did come with washers to keep the ball in from going through the wood. Which the hole is small enough, but um, it would damage the wood, so the washers are a good idea. Uh, I don't remember it being quite that cheap. Maybe they dropped the price on it. But yes, it is the Muso MUSO. One. That is the one that this is. All right. So now I'm going to stick the end down in the hole. It looks like there's a lot of slack on here, so it's probably going to go around more times than we want. Um, I might go get some wire cutters because I just I think that's way too much slack. So um, like I said, this one's a shorter scale. Of course, I don't want to cut it too much in case I end up taking these strings off and putting them on another um, instrument. But I'm going to cut it a little bit. <clears throat> All right. At some point, I, you know, I might decide to bring the toolbox in here instead of leaving it out there. I'm going to cut off about an inch, maybe a little bit less. Okay. That may have been too much. We'll find out. No, I think, I think that was a good amount. Okay. So just for people that um, don't know how to change strings, Basically, I'm going to hold it down a little bit so that it doesn't come up over this and then just kind of keep it pulled tight so that it doesn't um, it doesn't come off or come loose or anything. So if you've, if you've never changed strings, this is just something kind of important that you hold it so it doesn't come up above the um, end there. And then I got to figure out which way to turn the thing. All right. And now you're in for a very, very long ride. So I'm just going to kind of do this without um, without looking. Hopefully I'll do a good job. Let's see what we got here. That wood the washer is protecting is called the bridge plate. Awesome. That makes sense. Thank you, KR. And then Novik says he's thinking of getting some uh, flat wounds for his red journeyman. I really like the combo. Um, I've, I've been really enjoying it. Um, you just have to widen the groove on that. 
The good news about this one is since it has the polyurethane strings, I don't have to widen it, but the grooves might be too wide already. And so that's another thing that we're trying to figure out with this little experiment is just, is it too wide or not? All right, so now I'm having the opposite problem that I normally have. I guess as you're winding, you may want to push the strings up a little bit just so they don't end up all the way down at the bottom here. But I still want to hold this down so I don't end up up above either. So it's kind of finding that middle ground. And usually on an electric base, I don't have to keep it up like this. But on these, it tends to go down a little bit lower than I would normally want it to. All right. I don't think I cut enough off of the string. I think they're going to go around several times. How much quieter is the journeyman than, say, a Kala Scout? I mean, I think both are pretty quiet. Um, there's not a huge difference, but it but it is it, it doesn't project forward as well, since it has a um, two F holes instead of a uh, large sound hole. With polyurethane strings, I mean, the, the strings are just pretty quiet. So um, I would say there's not enough of a difference to be able to jam with anybody in either in either regard. So they're similar volume. Um, the Journeyman with the uh, polyurethane strings is probably a little quieter. I'm glad you like the, the um, Journeyman. I've certainly liked it. I know they discontinued the red one. Um, at some point, now they're just doing the black and the um, the wood grain. But the wood grain, they started putting um, round wound strings on as well, so that's kind of cool too. You think the new strings will slap around in the nut? I'm not sure. Um, so far, maybe a tiny bit. So I may have to put something in there to kind of fill the gap. We're just gonna we're just gonna test that. It's kind of this this experiment. So. It looks like I didn't cut this one short enough. I'm going to keep that in mind as I go along. Um, I didn't want to cut it too short in case these end up on a different instrument if this doesn't work. All right, so now I just got to make sure the saddle that I you know, cut from the previous video, I just got to make sure those all stay in place. That's another concern is just how's that going to work? Let's see. Man. Yeah, it's more string than I than I'm thinking. I think this uh, instrument is is a good bit shorter. You know, a, a half inch makes a big deal on the amount of wind you end up with on your on your string. So keep that in mind if you decide to do this. It might be too much wind for the for the tuner. There's a whole bunch of things I'm doing that I'm just kind of wondering wondering about. So keep that kind of stuff in mind as you go. And I'm trying to keep the little pieces of the saddle in place because I know they could easily fall out. That's why, I, that's why I'm doing one at a time as well, not just for the string tension idea. Okay. Ooh, I guess it just pulled through a little bit more. Okay, so I'm trying to go ahead and get it basically in tune. I can kind of hear what a fourth sounds like. So hopefully the other string didn't go out of tune before I tuned it to that. But so far, so good. The string feels like it's uh, got more tension than the polyurethane, but it's not a crazy amount. So, so far, so good. Um, it's kind of interesting. I'm going to plug it in and just check to see how they sound against each other, like volume wise and other, other things about it. There's a little bit of a buzz on this instrument and I still haven't figured out what all the rattles are coming from. I think one of them is the battery. So these are still stretching, so they're going to keep going flat. Oh, I have a tuner on the amp. Let's tune it up that way. It doesn't feel like an insane amount of tension so far, but this is just the G. So 
So far, so good. Now the real test, where we just do the rest of the strings. Let's see. Totally turned the wrong way. Oh my goodness. So let's see. Any other questions so far? So so far that one didn't didn't slap slap around or move around too much um, as far as the question about the nut being the right size or not. So far so good. If you like the sound, you can always file a new nut. That's true. Um, and that, that's a good call because this one already had an issue with the A string part of the nut. So it might, it might just need a replacement just because it came from the factory a little bit, you know, slightly defected. And that's an advantage to going to Kala is just, you know, they have more consistency. There's a little bit more quality control. So things like that won't happen with a Kala where they, where they just cut the nut entirely wrong and ship it out anyway. Um, and I don't mean entirely wrong, I mean just just slightly wrong, really. But um, still, it's a qual it's a quality control thing. Is the A nut slot too big? It's it's either too big or it comes to too sharp of an angle. Um, but I basically, the way that I fixed that was I took some of the packing foam, and it's not a good fix. But I thought it was I thought the rattle was because of that. So I put some packing foam underneath. You can see a thin thin thing there. And I might do that if, if the um, strings are sliding around too much in that slot as well. That might be my temporary fix for it. Um, some sort of material just around the string and so I can just loosen them and put something in there to not have the strings move around as much side to side. But it may not be necessary, so we'll just, we'll just have to see what happens. Alright, I'm trying to be really careful not to lose this piece of saddle. Um, because I know they're cut into four pieces from my previous experiment. All right. So we'll see what happens. D string. Here we go. I'm going thin to thick so that hopefully it won't it won't mess anything up too much. You can refill then recut. I could do that as well. Like I said today, I mean this is just a temporary thing since this is such a cheap one. I might experiment on that, you know, that kind of thing next time. Or I might just keep it keep it the way it is. These just look so short. This one's not going to have any extra, so I'm not going to cut this one. This one looks si like it's sized right. Okay. Can I do this? Okay. Let me make sure this is the D. Oh, I forgot the washer again. How much are the flat wounds? I can't remember if they dropped the price or not. When I um, so so these right here, uh, they were kind of a, a kind of a gift because um, I know um, Mike at Euchre Public, they have another set in stock, so you could ask him. Um, I know people were looking for those, but um, he's got some in stock. If you if you want a, a set, he's got at least one in stock right now, and I'm sure he can get more. But um, to answer your question, I, th I think that these were somewhere somewhere around 50. They, they might be a little bit cheaper. So Michael says he just ordered his first U-Base. Awesome. Which one did you get, Michael? Okay, so I want it to go. Oh, there's more string than I thought. This might still be too long. <laughs> We'll find out together. Of course, the way I'm tightening this right now, I'm probably putting a little bit of pressure, which might be widening the slot of the nut, which isn't really what we want either. Yeah, this is gonna be too long too. I should I should probably cut this one too. I'm I'm kind of hesitant to cut these because I feel like they're um. I feel like if I if I decide to take them off and put them on a different one, then this will um. This will kind of. Sorry, I can't do two things at once apparently. Um, then the strings, you know, I might need the strings to be longer for a different instrument. Because I remember on the Journeyman, the strings barely had any 
any room left over. They were, they were sized just right. And yes, these strings are specifically made for U-Base. You can kind of see on the packaging, they are specifically made for U-Base. Yes. So that's a great question, um, Rosie. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, not having a string winder gives me more time to answer your questions while doing this. It also makes for a longer video, so I apologize for that before we know the answers to the questions. Okay, let's pull it all the way through. Yeah, these are way too wrapped around the tuners. This is probably going to put too much pressure on the tuners. I'm probably going to end up having to cut the other strings. They may have just made them longer than they used to. I'm not sure. Maybe that was a complaint that people had. Because when I put them on the journeyman, the um, the wrapping came all the way down to here. So it's like it's not just a matter of cutting it short or something. It's definitely just um, it's definitely just some decision. Let's see. All right, so I'm gonna use the amp to tune it up. Let's see. Of course, we have to stretch it as we go. So right now it's reading a B. Okay, now we got it almost to a D. I'm going to tune the G up a little bit too, so we can hear them against each other. Okay, something is rattling fierce in here. Oh wow, and it's, there's a short. I think I'm almost there. Okay, there we go. You can tell it's not staying very well. Not sure why. We're going to have to stretch those out and kind of retune and retune and, and stuff. So um, that might that might take a little bit more time. I had to cut the excess off when I put the set on my Hadean. Okay, that's good to – or Hadean. That's good to know. Um, yeah, so I think I will cut some, some excess off. I think they made them longer. Because let me, let me give you an example. Do you see how the wrapping is way up there? Like, can you, can you even see where the, where the wrapping starts, the cloth wrapping on the string? It's like way up here where my finger is and, and beyond. On the other one, the Journeyman, do you see how it's just an inch past on every single one? And they're like size, it's really hard to tell, I guess. But you can kind of see how the wrapping kind of just starts here. So it's almost like it's really sized for this. But I feel like they made them longer. So it, it may it may or may not be the case, but I just have a feeling that the scale's not that much different between these instruments. So not sure, but it seems like this the scale is just uh the string's length has, has been changed. Someone made a decision. So far, so good. There's definitely more tension on it. It's probably going to bow the neck a little bit. And I can already see it kind of that it's going to go that way. Yeah. So I don't recommend this um, on, on the models without a truss rod. And this one does not have a truss rod. We're going to see how well, how well it does over the course of the next week. But it may completely destroy it. So uh, I don't recommend this still, but we'll see how it goes. Do you need to change the nut for every different strings? Um, I did not have to change the nut um, for the flat wound strings going from the round wounds, but uh, I did have to um, widen the groove underneath the nut. Sorry, on the nut, underneath the A string. So, so no and yes. But um, this one, I'm not really thinking I'm going to have to do anything because the grooves are already wide enough, unless they're way too wide and it causes some motion of the strings, you know, then that could be bad. But we'll see. But I don't, I, I'm just going to say this, I still don't recommend doing this um, on one of the cheaper models like this. You at least want to have a truss rod so that you can make adjustments if it starts to bow the neck 
um, and just for like extra extra support. Are there any decent solid body U bases that are less expensive than the Kala California line? Well, they used to have a different line that they canceled. So if you could find a used one of those, I think those were pretty good. The SUB series or something, sub series. But um, I haven't, I've only, I don't know if I've never played on one. I've never played on one plugged in. So I don't really have an, have an opinion on them. I think I messed around with one in a shop once. So I don't really have a, I have a solid opinion on it. All right. So let's see if I remember the washer this time on the A string. Here we go. Hey. I'll put the washer on before I cut the string. How about that? So let's see. I don't want to cut it too short because I want to have enough to still put it on. Um, it might end up on the wanderer because I might I might use it for another string video. We'll see. Instead of buying a whole new set and having, whoops. Oh, we knew this was gonna happen. If you cut the saddle into four pieces, don't hold it upside down like that. Don't absentmindedly do that, or it'll fall off, and you'll have to do what I'm doing, which is, I guess, the comedy of the of the live stream. Where did the piece of saddle go? <laughs> It's a disappearing act, apparently. Wow. Well, all right. Well, that puts this to a halt, so I'll answer questions while I look for that. I heard that Donner bases are good. Yeah, I know, right? So just know that if you did the um, the saddle cut uh, exercise, oop, I just stepped on it. Good. So if you do that and you have little tiny pieces like this, this is the downside. When you go to change strings, they can fall off. And it's just really annoying. But I think I'll be able to get it back on there. We'll see. Yeah, since I used like a saw blade or something, there's enough room to get that back on there. And let me just, I'm going to try it both, both ways to make sure that, it, that that was the right way for it to go. We'll see. Yeah, it fit better the other way. Yeah, definitely. Okay. All right, so that one's, that's just something to keep in mind if you did that one. So I, I have to make sure to leave basically at this angle. Oh, thank you, Michael. I appreciate that. Have you done any, um, any modifications to, to anything yet? Having to keep it this way makes that, that part a little bit harder. So let's see how much we have to cut. So it's sticking beyond... Okay, watch out for that saddle. It's sticking beyond the um, headstock about three or four inches. I only want it to stick up about maybe two to three inches. Let's, let's do that. I'm going to cut off about an inch and a half. Okay. Hopefully that didn't make the saddle pop out. Okay. That's so crazy. How did that even happen? So that, that little piece of packing foam ended up sticking to the base and then sticking to the string. It must be like a static clean kind of thing, but it didn't go with the other string. It went, it went this way, which is kind of strange. All right. Looking at the amount that's here, I probably didn't cut off enough. I'm just, you know, if you were doing this and you're not planning on putting it on a different one, then you might, um, you might not want to do this. So, Here's the thing. This is a cheaper bass ukulele, and for whatever reason, they made this one tuner really hard to turn. So I'm just hoping I don't break the tuner in the process of doing this because it's not it's not a um, hip shot or anything. So so we're just hoping that it lasts without busting on me. So there are a lot of things about getting a slightly more expensive bass ukulele that's, that's just just good to know um i'm not sure about the caramel i think was it michael is that you that had the um that said you had the the caramel 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 um yeah does that one have a truss rod and do you know what a truss rod is uh and, and yet again thank you so much for supporting 
but I just wonder if that one has a truss rod. <laughs> it's your first U base. Awesome. So you haven't gotten a chance to modify things. And then uh, Novik says the A string tuner got a little wobbly after a while. This is the opposite of wobbly. This is like like hurting my wrist to turn, which means I'm putting a lot of torque on the instrument. I'm trying to do that. Oh, cool. Okay, so, you, so you've modified things before. Awesome. Just not on a U bass. Okay. Even with a string winder, this is this is nuts. If I had a, even if I had a string winder, I think it would just break the string winder. So I highly recommend getting probably a you know something like a collar brand. I think what I want to do with the with the flat wound strings, if I end up getting the ebony fretless, just kind of replacing this with that. Although this looks more like the upright bass, which is what I like about it. That one's just a better instrument. <laughs> so stuff to keep in mind. I'm putting too much downward pressure. Got to give the string the, enough room to wrap around. Okay, maybe I cut off about the right amount because this is only wrapping around three or four times. All right, so now I just got to make sure the saddle is going to stay while we do this. Okay, looks looks like so far so good. Okay, not quite there yet. And this is the one where they cut the groove a little bit wide, even for the um, polyurethane strings. Steve says, I have a caramel. It has a truss rod. Awesome. That's good. So if you were going to change the strings to flat wounds, um, both of you guys with the uh, caramel, caramel, then um, one, five, so we need to be a fourth, not a fifth. That's a tritone. That's pretty much fourth. Okay. So for now, that's going to be good enough. I'm not going to worry too much about anything else. It seems like I have a short in here because it's not picking up unless I have this facing this way. So, um, yeah, I highly recommend just, just not dealing with such an inexpensive instrument. But uh, I wanted a fretless one that looked like this, and Kala hasn't made one yet. So or if, anyone, if anyone is uh, affiliated with Kala, you should tell them I want a fretless journeyman, uh, maybe made of ebony wood um, with the flat wounds. And I think that would be the ultimate, the ultimate U base for me. And it can have fret lines. And this one doesn't, which is kind of cool. It makes it look more like a upright base, but uh, it's also a pain in the butt staying in tune on this one. You have to really use your ear more than anything. All right, so let's see if I can not make the same mistake twice about the saddle. And just get this to go here. The other reason that I would recommend getting just a just more of a name brand. I mean, this one doesn't even really have a name. I've seen the same base without the sticker on the headstock. So there's that. Let's see about how loud are you bases acoustically compared to like an acoustic guitar. They're, they're not loud enough to compete with an acoustic guitar or someone strumming. Um, they're not at all loud enough for that. But if you have the round wound strings, <laughs> thank you so much, KR. I probably would forget the washer again. <laughs> Knowing me, trying to talk to you guys and do everything all the time, I probably would. So thank you for that. Let's see if I can find the washer. There it is. <laughs> all right. Jeff says, what does the number mean on a tuner? Okay, so um, basically there are different, it's like a, you have a pitch class, I guess, which is like, um, you know, is it a C, is it an A, is it whatever? Um, if you've ever played a piano, there's one C on there called middle C, and middle C is also called C4. So it's the C that's, kind of high for, for a bass. It's probably the C that would be the, I want to say the 17th fret on the G string. I think that one's actually middle C, but that's also like the um, C string on a ukulele, on an ukulele. So knowing that, um, you can tell how much lower 
our pitch is so it's an it's like an octave lower two octaves lower right so if you have an a2 then then that would be um like two octaves lower than middle c or really the a below middle c i guess one octave lower possibly but yeah they did they do have a meaning um so hopefully that helps a little bit it's a really poor um explanation but i can't do too many things at once apparently so but basically it's it's the yeah it's the one below a um basically the lowest ones are one the lowest octave the the next set of set of notes is is you know a2 then you get a3 a4 so on i think a4 is actually the one above middle c not below middle c um let me think let me just look at the piano one two three Four. No, it is the one below middle C. I had it right the first time. Okay. All right. But if you've ever played piano, you kind of know that. So um, it kind of just helps you with knowing what range you're in. I did remember to put the washer on. Yes. Yes, I did. Thank you, though. <laughs> hmm. Man, that's probably still too long. Hate to cut it too short by accident, though. Let's see. Let's just do a half inch off of there. Probably can like regret that when it breaks this instrument. I try to put it on a different instrument. No, that's not. That's that's still too long. Probably, we'll find out. Man, and if it's this much too long, then I could probably do a little bit more. But honestly. If it's if, if it's any longer than that, then then the the wrap won't be kind of as useful. So I gotta be careful how much I cut off of there. But yeah, this is definitely a lot. Okay. I'm gonna move that up to there. Ooh, hopefully that's staying in the Alright. This should stay on, but we'll see what happens. So far, it feels like maybe it's making the instrument bow out a little bit. So we'll just have to see what it does over time. Okay. Just wondering if you needed to mute. Nope. Did you remember to put the watch? Yes, I did. And uh, I hope it plays before your action gets too high. I know, right? There's no real way to adjust it, so who knows? Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Yeah, I just crossed 6,000 what uh, last week or something. It's very cool. I think the next the next one I'm excited about is 10, but I'll still be excited every time I get to a different to a different thousand just because that means there are that many people playing U bass. I think that's awesome. And I mean really you can you can tell there are a lot of people that are interested in it because when you look at the other review videos, there's one I have on the channel when I, when I did the one with the round wound strings, people um, viewed that one hundreds, a hundred thousand times. So that might mean that a lot of people probably watched it twice, but maybe there are 50,000 or 60,000 people that um, are interested in you bass, whether they ended up getting one or not. Okay. We've got all the strings on here. As you can see, it did bow up a little bit. That action's pretty high right here. It's kind of hard to tell, but it's it's pretty high, and we haven't tightened the strings all the way, so we'll we'll see what happens. The real test is just in a week. Is this part still going to be attached? <laughs> Hate saying it that way, but it's kind of the truth. It's kind of a good a good uh, question. Hmm. I'm wondering if this battery is just going dead. Let's see. Gosh, it's definitely causing a rattle. I think that's the battery rattling around. Man, these, yeah, if these drop in pitch this much, that means it's... Yeah, so I'm going to reiterate, do not do this. Um, 
you know, don't try this at home, kids, kind of thing. If you don't have a truss rod, don't do this because it is it is definitely putting some strain on this instrument. There's no doubt in my mind. So um, I do want to warn you guys, but um, yeah. You bass is underrated? Heck yeah, it is. When I came across your videos, that inspired me to get a bass, and I love it even though it's an off-brand. Yeah, I, I think the off-brands can be good. The Hadians are, are pretty good. Um, I remember liking the one that I had. I know I gave it away, but um, but it was a pretty good one. I mean, I actually really did like it. Do you have a video about choosing an amp? I don't yet. Um, and then uh, Jake asks, which, which bass is this? This one, it has a sticker on it that says like Jacques or something, but I almost feel like that's just a private labeling kind of thing. Um, and that it's really the Muso, M-U-S-O-O, -O, if you're looking on Amazon. I'm going to try to include a link on this after the fact so that um, you guys can can see this bass. I, if you do buy it, know there are some inconsistencies that you're going to have to kind of work out. It's, it's not a um, quality controlled kind of factory. So some of them will be better than others. Some of them will have little quirks to them that other ones won't. So just keep that in mind if you decide to get one of these. Okay. And probably don't put the flat wound strings on it. It is definitely putting some stress on here. So um, I just realized I wasn't going to use this with the, with the rubber strings probably at all. You know, so it's either this or getting a different one. Those strings will increase the pull substantially. Each string pulls between 16 and 22 pounds. That's cool. I didn't know the specific numbers of how much they pull. That's very useful and helpful. Thanks. Uh, KR again, right? R not B. Okay, good. Yeah. Just making sure I'm looking at it right. All right. The fact that they're not staying makes me think that it's just pulling the neck, too. I hope I don't get injured if the neck decides to just snap on me. But you get the idea of why this is a very, like, dangerous kind of endeavor. So I'm going to leave them on here for a week is the plan, if it'll last that long. We're really testing how well they did the, the gluing or binding here. Let's see. <laughs> like wanting to stand back. Gosh, this one's tuned to almost drop D, so. No, it was actually at an E. My bad. Good. So no more, no extra tension than this. That's good. It doesn't sound right though. Can you reinforce it yourself? That's not something that I know how to do. Um, if, if any of you guys, if any of you guys know know this, then um, then let me know. But I, I don't know how you would reinforce it without like I don't know. It'd be easier to make a new one probably at that point. E string is just pulling sharp, which is interesting. It's kind of a good thing, not having to put any more tension on that one. The A can't decide if it's in tune or not. Man, this rattle is ridiculous. So it runs on a 9 volt battery, which I find kind of strange, because all the other ones run on those little watch batteries. And uh, the way they put it in there, it rattles around so much. Sounds kind of cool. Let me turn up the volume and see if it's actually coming through the amp. Yeah, it's coming through. A little too much now. Let's see. It's probably... Yeah, it's not quite staying in tune yet, but we're getting there. So does anybody have any questions about this so far? Besides, can you reinforce it? Because I don't know how to reinforce it. 
Yeah, so KR says it's a lot of work. All right, Novix, thanks for hanging out. Appreciate you stopping by. Uh, remove the uh, yeah, remove the fretboard, route a box channel on a level neck, install a yeah, carbon fiber rod, and re-glue the fretboard. Yeah, it sounds like a pain in pain in the butt that I won't be doing. <laughs> yeah, I'd rather Kala just make one and manufacture it that way. Uh, I almost feel like we should if if you guys are interested in that same kind of kind of style view base that I am, I wonder if we could get a whole bunch of people together that want one saying saying that and uh and have them actually just make one that would be really cool to me all right so i'm not gonna put the back plate back on right now because there's just no point it'll probably rattle too so we got the strings on yeah so it sounds it sounds pretty good it's hard to stay in tune i think the dots are pretty much worthless now that the action's so high um, yeah, maybe I should be afraid to hold it that close to my face in case this just like snaps. But, uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't recommend doing that on a base without doing this on a base without a truss rod. So I think some of the Hadians have truss, rod, truss rods. So if you got a fretless Hadian and you decide to put flat ones on it, I think that would be fine. Um, although I've heard some people having trouble with the solid body ones and you may, it may be, it may have just been a defective pickup for them. But um, you may want to look into that if you're not sure. Yeah, it sounds a lot like an electric. It almost makes me want to play some Jocko on it, but I know it's going to be way out of tune if I do that. One, because I'm not used to the scale being so close. And two, just fretless, just kind of adjusting. Let's see. Yeah, because it's fretless, you can adjust for it starting out. Yeah, so so if you're if you're going slowly, you can. It's kind of hard to adjust really, really fast, though, if I'm playing faster tunes. Is that a very tiny string instrument on the wall next to the poster? It's not a real, it's not a real instrument. It's like a Christmas ornament, <laughs> but um, it technically has strings on it. You can't really play it though. Good question. <laughs> thanks for thanks for stopping by. Just push Kala to make a fretless journeyman. That's what I want to do. I want to get him to make a fretless journeyman out of ebony. So so I, I like the way the ebony model looks. So I think that would be really cool. Um, I, I totally agree that they that they need to. I've been saying that saying that for a while, but I never said it to anybody that worked at Kala. So now I just have to say, hey, would you guys be willing to make this? I think sometimes their their answer might be no, because um, I mean, honestly, just the the ebony fretless is like the same thing. It just doesn't look quite as much like an upright bass. Man, these strings are so high up; it's crazy. <laughs> yeah, I have a feeling this is going to get worse day by day, and then I'm going to be making a a video like in a day or two, just saying the thing snapped. Okay. Is it, okay. Let's see what else we got. There's fields. I have a Kala and a Hadian. Kala doesn't have a, Kala doesn't have a truss. Hmm. All the Kalas that I've seen do have truss rods. So I don't, you may have gotten maybe an older one or something. I'm not sure. Yeah, and, and there, there's a lot of inconsistency on the very, very inexpensive ones. Okay, Rosie made a joke. My favorite joke I made up. What does the Primus fan yell at the concert? More Claypool. <laughs> uh, no, one of the very first one. Okay, yeah, I was thinking the, maybe the first runs, they didn't feel like they needed truss rods because they were putting the um, polyurethane or I could have even been silicone at the time, but probably polyurethane still strings on them. So that might be why. Eventually this will stay in tune unless it just, just keeps pulling on it. Wow, that one went way out. This is the one that I'm worried is going to make make all the difference. Sharp very quickly. All right, sorry guys, and it's kind of it's not super exciting hearing me tune. I'll play on it some more here in a second. I'll probably have to leave a um. Wow, 
Wow, it's hard to stay in tune on this. Yeah, I ended up that sharp. Okay. Yeah, so it's really hard to stay in tune on these with the um I guess it has more neck than I thought. Very cool. Can I have your double bass? No, I kind of need it for, for some gigs. But um, it's a Shin, um, what's the, it's a laminate model. I'm trying to remember what they call it. The SB80, SB90, one of those two. I think it's the SB80. But yeah, those are cool. Seth says, how do you think it uh, sounds compared to the Journeyman? I kind of like the way this one sounds, but uh, it's probably just that I like the fretless sound. So um, I think it sounds pretty good. Once again, it runs on a nine volt. The weirdest thing about this bass is that it has an output that's like an XLR output in addition to the quarter inch, like right next to each other. And I just always thought that was kind of strange, but kind of cool. It could, it could come in handy in certain situations like plugging into a PA system, but um, it's kind of weird. And then have you, uh, Michael says, have you seen or tried the Magic Fluke timber basses? I've seen them. I have not played on one. I had a student that had one. They make a fretless. His might have. I can't remember if his was fretless or not. And then do you have more 30-inch acoustic bass? Are you 30-inch? Um, um, so these are obviously smaller smaller scale than that. But 30-inch. 30, 30 um I know that the normal scale is like 34 for um, full-size electric bass. So I don't have any that are that particular range. But if you're talking about 34-inch um, scale, like the full-scale electric basses, I have a fretless six-string. But it wasn't originally fretless. Someone took the frets off, but they, they did it right, and I ended up buying it later after that. Um, it's an Ibanez uh, sound gear, Ibanez sound gear. And then I have a six-string with frets, another six-string. I have a six-string Warrior with frets. Um, and a five string Schecter that kind of looks like they were ripping off a jazz bass a little bit, but like without the pick guard. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So, um, as much as I like the way this one looked, I knew when I was, when I was buying this, this bass ukulele that, that it could be good or it could be bad. It ended up being somewhere in between. Um, so far, despite the action being rather high, like it's pretty low down here and pretty high in the middle, which it was already doing, it was already like that with the um, polyurethane strings, but you can really see it here. It definitely gets a lot higher by the um, start of the body. And I don't know, maybe I should check some other things to see, to see how it's doing. Hmm. Yeah, so I'm I'm not so sure. It's it's probably just warping the neck. So don't don't try this at home, I would say. And then what is your favorite bass brand? Like full scale basses. Oh, I have a um I have a Squire Jazz. So Fender's a really, really good brand that I like. But the um the Squire Classic Vibe series sounds a lot like them for a lot cheaper. And not every Squire is, is great. But the um, Classic Vibe series is awesome. So I have one of those too. Any cracking separating at the heel? Um, so far, so far I think I'm good. It's really hard to tell. He said at the heel. That's here, right? It's like right in here. Um, 
mean, I'll just I'll just kind of show up here. I don't see any any cracks or anything. So so far so far it's okay. Um, I, I'm worried about that, but I think it'll it'll be something that happens over time, not immediately. I had um, I had one a, a ukulele that had that problem. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to lie though, it's a lot of fun being able to slide that far on here. It has a little bit more sustain, you know, than the, um, uh, what am I trying to say? The um, polyurethane strings. Yeah, so obviously the slides are the reason to have this. And it works really well for that. It's glued to the solids. Okay. Yeah, it's so far it's not it's not cracking unless there was already a crack in there before I started doing this. Um, and it looks like they have some sort of like it's weird because it has like extra dots on there. Some of them are painted white and some of them aren't. So I don't think that's a crack. I think it's actually just where a dot is. But um, so far, I don't see any. Um, I'm not sure if holding this up helps you to be able to see it at all. But if you can, it seems okay. Not not the greatest lighting, but you get the you get the idea. Maybe I can just bend the light over without dropping it. I don't know. Let's see. So yeah. So I, I think it's a pretty cool idea. I just don't know how long it's going to really um, last. <laughs> so yeah. So this is the closest thing to, to my upright now as, as a U-Base that I own. So if you compare them kind of side by side, you can see why I wanted this. I kind of wanted a miniature version of my upright. The cutaway is cool. I, don't, I think I like it better um, with the cutaway than without. But without the cutaway, it would look even more like a, like a um, upright. But yeah, it's a lot like a like a mini upright bass. Maybe I should play it like this. Maybe I should slide into the G. whatever reason, the um, there's a short in the electronics, and so when I hold it vertically, it doesn't really work. <clears throat> I think it's just the battery being loose in the holder. <coughs> All right. So anybody else got any questions about this space ukulele or any others? Let me know. Anybody want me to try to play something on here? <laughs> There we go. It's hard to find it without the dots being in the right place. There it is. You can tell it's going out of tune. I might have to tune it again. I'm going to try out the tuner, the onboard tuner. Yes, let's see. Any more questions for Freebird? Yeah, Freebird might actually sound okay on here since it was done with the slide. It might actually sound sound good on a fretless. So normally I would just just laugh laugh that off, but it might actually be kind of fun to try to play a little bit of that slide melody on there. Uh oh, maybe the battery's just dying because the tuner kind of messed messed up on me. I'll use the amps tuner instead. A string just doesn't want to stay in tune. Okay, now it's sharp, but it'll probably go back to being in tune. Let me get out slide again. Gee whiz. Mm -hmm. 
Vou ser melhor. <laughs> yeah. So that's enough for Freebird, probably. I don't know the rest well enough to do it, but uh, it kind of works on here. Yeah, I can't can't get it with these these dots are in the wrong place. But it's okay. I recently made my own fretless bass ukulele out of a, a hobby box and a screw on neck. Oh, that's awesome. Very cool. I'd love to see that if you have a video of it um, or an audio sample even. That'd be cool. Or just a picture. And what, how do you say it? Zeno, Zeno, is it Tesla or Tesla? Tesla, okay. Very cool. All right. Put rubber strings on the upright. Oh my gosh. I know they make tape wounds. So. There are ones that look more like they're rubber, but they have like a metal core, um, which is like totally the opposite of this, where it has a nylon core with um, with metal around it. I think these still have the nylon core. Let me know if I'm wrong, or maybe the box will let me know if I'm wrong. And they don't say anything about if it's a nylon core or not. Yeah, they do on the back. Chrome steel wrapped around a nylon core. The U-Bass flat wound four string set by Golly Strings. Uh, enables fast and stable intonation, bringing a warmth and consistency to your U-Bass like never before. These high-tension, notice they say that they're high-tension U-Bass strings, offer a timbre and maneuverability akin to the double bass. I agree. Smooth to the touch, the chrome flat-wound tape allows your fingers to glide around the fretboard and helps protect the neck from wear and tear. Perfect for fretted or fretless U-Bass. Or fretless bass ukulele. Doesn't say that. Same same difference. Gosh, that rattle is fierce. So there was one time to get rid of that rattle, I wrapped the battery in toilet paper or tissue paper so that that way it wouldn't um, rattle in its, in its little casing. And uh, I think they just sized it slightly off, but it has a nine volt battery in there. This is the only bass ukulele I have that has a nine volt battery. And I have no clue why it needs a nine volt. It, they could just use little watch batteries. They last long enough, you know, like they last for about a year or maybe a little bit more. What else do you guys want to hear fretless? Why is it called a U bass, but a bass ukulele instead of a ukulele bass? It's a good question. So G love, I'm not sure if I remember that one, the groove. All right, so now I just want to hear Teen Town. I actually played a little bit of it earlier. Um, that will require me to be in tune a little better, probably. Golly. Okay, it's probably sharp, but that's okay. Ah. I had it a second ago. Wow. I don't think it's staying in tune. Fingers aren't working today. Just for whatever reason, I can't do it today. Sorry about that. Yeah, I don't know about slap on here. Well, um, <clears throat> you're saying, why is it a bass ukulele and not a ukulele bass? Um, I'm going to put it this way. If you have a baritone ukulele, you, you can't really call it a ukulele baritone. Because ukulele baritone would almost sound like 
like somehow a string instrument mixed with a wind instrument. So I'm thinking the reason that they that they actually have it as bass ukulele is because you have a baritone ukulele, a tenor ukulele, a soprano ukulele. So it's really just matching that um, matching that way of wording it. So I think that's the reason that they do that. But um, but you can really do either because we're also just thinking of it as its own unique thing. But um, but that's the reason why I think I think most people prefer to say bass ukulele unless they're talking about the kala, and um, you know the kala you could say ukulele bass and it's, it's totally fine. But I think that's the reason why is they're just trying to get it to match the um, the naming system that was already there on on ukuleles. Uh, I didn't I just thought of that. I'm not sure if that's really the reason, but it, it makes sense now now that I think about it and say it out loud. I think that's probably why. But but it's also a trademarked it's also a trademarked name, yeah. There you go. So cool. Anyone else have any other questions or, or anything else? Did I missed some other requests. I know I'm, I don't know why I can't play Team Town all of a sudden. It just disappeared from me. I was just playing it a minute ago. I don't know why it's like just all of a sudden disappeared. Can you bring out one of your six string basses? Uh, the only one that's in here is the Warrior. So that would probably be the easiest one to grab. It's in the case. Um, I've done it before. But yeah, let's let's do that and take a break from this. And we'll just let these sit. And if we hear a loud pop, we'll know that it's too much tension. All right. Give me a minute to get out of the case. There's enough room over here, maybe. So this is the warrior. And I'm seeing it. I recently got it fixed. So before it had a short in it, um, I just took it to the shop because I didn't feel like, I've never soldered anything. I'll put it that way. So they did a little bit of that for me. Hopefully that'll stay in the chair while I set the case somewhere. All right. So yeah, this thing is massive. But kind of a, it's almost like a, if it's not a shorter scale, then it, then the body makes it feel like a shorter scale. If that makes sense. So. Oh, it thinks that's a B. Oh, that's wise. Sorry, half this video is me tuning things. Yeah, it is kind of like a Chapman stick. It sounds really good for, for tapping, too. Yeah, I just recently got it fixed, so it's got a lot of like. Yeah, so these are the Bartolini pickups. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
So low that it's it's too easy to to kind of hit notes that I'm not meaning to. <laughs> and Kr, thank you so much, and I appreciate all the all the help you've you've done with uh, reminding me to put the washers on and check certain things. And you just asked really good questions that have helped a lot, so I appreciate you a lot. <laughs> Too much for the speakers. I'm gonna turn it down a little bit. Maybe I'll make a loop pedal jam with this guy. Let's see what I want to do. doing those loop pedal jams they're kind of fun so yeah so that's that's the six string warrior um they're a company actually based out of georgia so um i've never been to their factory any, anything but um i got into these because adam nitty if you've ever heard of that bass player he used to play warriors and now he has um ibanez is his uh is his thing so when i saw this i had to i had to get it <laughs> but yep that's it Jonathan, uh, let's see. You just got back in time to see a fellow six-string six player. 
Yeah, I do some six string on here on here too occasionally. Yes, you should do a lesson on how to harmonize. That's a good one. Yeah, har harmonizing. Basically, what I was doing at the end when I was harmonizing that line was um, I picked like two notes in a row, just did a short little melody, and then I harmonized it in thirds. So if you're playing like a, um, <clears throat> let's say you're playing in G minor, I was playing the first note of the scale, second note, third note. Well, then I could harmonize it with the third note with the while playing the first note, you know, the first time. So uh, let's see. That's the first note and the third note of the scale at the same time. And the second note and the fourth note. And the third note and the fifth note of the scale. And back. And then you could go even further and you could add a you could add a fifth to that, right? So then you're playing the root, the third, and the fifth at the same time. The second, the fourth, and the sixth, which I'm doing Dorian, so I did a raised six, and then the third, the fifth, and the seventh of the key at the same time. So that's kind of all I was doing there was I came up with the melody line and then just harmonized it in thirds. Pretty easy, pretty straightforward. Yeah, so it's pretty cool. I, I like this bass a lot. But um, but yeah, back to you, bass. <laughs> Out of all the ones I have, which one is your favorite bass that you've seen on this channel? If you've watched, if you've watched several times, is it the upright bass? Is it this warrior bass? Um, is it one of the U basses? Which one do you like the best? See if I can put this up without showing myself. I'll go back to the fretless. We're gonna check on it and see how it's doing. Did it survive? Let's see. It's surviving so far. I don't see any cracks yet. Okay. So let's see. How are we doing? Ooh. The Warrior and the Journeyman? Yeah. yeah those, are, those are two of my favorites, too. I think this battery's just dying. I think that's what's going on. Oh, well. Quieter thing going on. I forgot to turn the wine back up. There we go. my intonation or if it's just that the instrument's gone out of tune already. Both. Yeah, playing fretless is a lot harder. You really have to rely on your ear a lot more unless you have like fret lines or if the dots are in the right place on the top. They didn't really put these dots in the right place. They're close. Close doesn't help that much. I guess I'm gonna try again. I wanna loop something that's in tune for sure, so I'm gonna try to do something with the open strings. Let's see. Something like 
that maybe distort a little bit. finally got a little groove going so yeah the intonation part of this is kind of a it's kind of a monster trying to play it but that's the idea so we know that we we can theoretically put the flat wound strings on there and it'll last longer than an hour that's all we know at this point so far the strings haven't really gone up any more than they did before kind of at about the same level although it'd be really hard to tell the difference between one millimeter to another one, they're already that far away um, without measuring it. But uh, yeah. So um, <clears throat> was that, uh, is that how do you, yeah, this is, this is the, this is the promised one. I got it back out for you. So these are the flat wound strings. These are metal strings and they're on this bass ukulele. So hopefully that helps. You think two hours? <clears throat> okay. How about this? Um, You guys gotta, you guys gotta guess. So every, everybody put their prediction in. How long do you think it'll be before something happens to where it's just not playable anymore, leaving these flat one strings on? So my goal is gonna be to leave them on there for at least a week to see, but we'll see. So it sounds like acoustic, if you're wondering. 24 hours for Robert. Um, Alan says two hours. Robert says 24 hours. Anyone else want to make a prediction what they think? Hmm. It's weird. It's not making any noise. I unplugged it. That's what So, Alan, you're thinking a full week? I'm trying to think. Like, what kind of prize could we do? Is this something like requesting a song or something, maybe for an arrangement or something like that? Um, or, or requesting a bass line, and you can request it in advance, and then maybe I'll include it on the next live stream. And then that way, if I don't already know it, you guys can, can do that. So maybe that'll be what the what the winning prize is. It's just um, 
getting one of your bass lines played. How much tension is, is on the strings? Well, um, they're really not super tense. I thought that would be worse than this, honestly. Like, I'm not pushing down very hard to get them to go all the way down to the fingerboard. So I'm not quite sure. I'm still trying to figure out, is it just the strings stretching that's making it go out of tune so quickly? Or is it the um, tension on the neck bowing the neck making it go out of tune? You decide. Because they go out very quickly. see stretchy strings yeah I, I think that's the case but i wonder why the a string is the one that's going out more often than the other ones ravioli by first of october okay so we're going by let's see what are what are your final things so alan are you going with the whole week or are you going with um or are you going with the two hours that it will break break and um let's see who else? Who else was in on this? Let's see. 24 hours. So we'll see how it goes, Robert. And I'll let you guys know. Anyone else want to make a bet? Okay. Seth says they last and they don't break. You have faith. That's kind of the, um, yeah, it won't, yeah, it won't be the strings that break. It, it, it would be the neck warping, like beyond playability is, is what I'm thinking. So it may not snap. I don't know that it'll snap, but, but just to getting to the point where it's not really planned. So no longer than a week. Problem is everybody's guessing the same thing now. Longer than a week, no longer than a week, but all about a week. So on the next live stream, I'll have to I'll have to do that. It's hard to say because they were kind of high with the um, rubber strings on it already, but the action kind of coming up here kind of might suggest that, that it's starting to just kind of starting to um, bow in or you know bow a little bit more overnight so that, that'd be like one day um alan says two to five hours okay so i'll just have to keep an eye on so it's already been it's already been about one hour still maybe like one hour and five minutes or something i can't i'll have to look through the video to see when i um finish that so it's 8 30 and eastern time so maybe that maybe that'll help okay and so for me i'm saying when, when i'm talking about warping i'm talking about just like being warped so bad that it really isn't playable or isn't worth playing, you know, that kind of thing. Okay. And then, um, Novik says breaks by morning. So like completely like poof, maybe who knows? I mean, all it would have to do to break is just, if this is part that's glued right here, the, or the way it's bound, I don't know if it's glue or not. Um, probably though, if that just comes loose, that would, that would do it. So there's no telling it might do that. It might not. So we'll just see what happens. And, uh, next week, We'll do that, and I'll try to. I have to come back to this to see um, what people said, and just see how it goes. I have a feeling it's going to last longer than hours, but unplayable by morning. Okay, so I'll just go um, with whatever you guys said last on here. Um, so uh, Alan says starts to warp. Let's go with the the point where it's like really not playable or something. It might last all week. I just. And I should make constraints like how much do I have to play on it, you know, to, um, to constitute it being played on, or are we just going with what the strings will do to it itself? 
Okay. So Alan, you're basically saying a, a visible crack somewhere by morning. Okay. That's fair enough. That's a good good way to put it. And then Novik says unplayable. So we're still kind of saying the same thing. So it'd be hard to, you know, I'm I don't know. I may just end up asking you guys what what you'd like to see on the live stream next time. And I'll ask my patrons too and see if they have any anything on there. Okay. So you guys agree. Very cool. All right. So does anybody else have anything to add or any questions? Three, five. I'm not sure if that's the song or if you're talking about frets or which. If it's like furniture, the wood will break before the glue fractures. Hmm. It depends on what glue they used, I think. I've had an, an ukulele that I've dropped several times. Uh, it was the one that I played the most, um, not, not one of the bases. Um, I, I think I dropped it a couple times, maybe not several, but a couple times. And eventually the um, this part just came undone. So I didn't really break it. Just the glue just kind of came undone. Oh, I, I had a feeling you were going there. Okay. Let me see if I can get this thing to work. It's apparently having a short. Yeah. So on the fretless, since there are no frets, you, you probably just want to say the note names. So it'd be like E G A E G. A sharp A, you can call it B5 if you want to. Um, e, G, A, G, E. Which you probably already knew that, I'm just I'm just saying. I know what that bass line's from. I might not be playing quite right, but you get the idea. Yeah, it's totally easy to write the tabs. All right, guys. Thank you so much for hanging out. Um, we'll just kind of have to see how it goes throughout the week. I'm going to leave the strings on. I might pick it up and play it every now and then. Um, but I'll try to check on it every day to see to see if something happens. And, you know, it, maybe I'll check more more periodically the first day. But then after that, we'll just go with, with what day. Play some 50, 50 60 rot. Hmm. How close to the sound of the upright? So I mute the string slightly. Oh, apparently I just lose all the sound. I just get all the rattle. Yeah, I think it could sound a lot like it. All right, yeah, that one is stand by me. Oh, the oh the other one. You're talking about the Pink Floyd one. Yes, yeah, so the one from a while ago was actually Pink Floyd. Um, hey, you. Dun, 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 dun. I think it's just Hey, you, isn't it? No. It's, um, yeah, I think it is. Let me check it out. The fretless one, the one with the slides, is actually on fretless. It, it was Pink Floyd. You did get that one right. Hey, you. I 
At some point he slides up. I can't remember which one he slides up after or which one he slides down. But yeah, it's a fun little fretless thing that, that's on a Pink Floyd song. It was Hey You. Yeah. Awesome. Ravioli, if you know it. I don't know that one, so I'd have to listen to it. I don't think I've even heard it. So I'll have to check that out. But I like the I like the request. I know last time you had a um you had a few requests that were really cool. I can't remember what they are all of a sudden, but but they were cool. So it was kind of fun trying to like listen to them and, and play the bass line. Oh, it's Rob Scallion's band? Okay, or Scallion's band. That's awesome. Any Victor Wooten stuff. I don't usually do it on a fretless. Um maybe I could do um, Amazing Grace. If I could get the, the bass to actually Yeah, I think the battery must be dying. Hmm. Yeah, it's hard without the frets there. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so it kind of just just died on me. Portrait of Tracy, same thing. It's it's hard to do on the fretless with um. Oops. Yeah, kind of hard to do on the fretless, but if I had some frets, it would help a little bit. And uh, yeah, this nine volt must have just. Or the cable has a short. Maybe it's the cable. Maybe it's not the bass at all. Hmm. Okay. I'm oh, sorry, Sushi. That's probably enough of Portrait Tracy, but you get the idea. And the Victor Wooten. Wow. Oh, there it goes again. So it's probably the cable. Let me do this. Get rid of this extra cable and just take the other one out of the looper. See if that fixes the problem. If it does, then we know. Still cut out. So it's either the bass or the battery, because this this cable, um, I know it works um, better than the other one did. So it has something to do with the bass. It's not the cable. Or or it's a combination. Yeah, and with cables, um, this one isn't a sturdy cable at all. I want to show you guys this cable, because it's kind of funny. This is a first act cable. If you've ever seen the brand, you know, that makes, like, really crummy... Um, Entry level, I should say entry level, not crummy. That was kind of rude of me to say crummy, but um, entry level stuff. But they had these cords, and I needed a cord at a gig one time, so I sent someone over to Toys R Us, um, and they grabbed me this cable. You can kind of see this as something, something like that's the first act logo. I guess it's not going to show up very well, but um, yeah. And as long as you wrap them correctly, they last forever. So. You guys are getting more than you bargained for here, right? You can have you ever heard of over undering cables? You go over the first time, then you go under the next time, and then over and then under. That way you're not just coiling it around and around and around. You're actually just kind of doing this way and then undoing it the other way. It doesn't twist the ends. And so then they they don't short out anywhere near as much. But but yeah, this is the only first act thing that I would recommend anybody ever buy. Um, although I did have a guitar that I converted into a bass before I had a U bass, so it ended up being that way. Yeah, so over undering like that. Uh, the other thing that's an advantage of it, which can be really hard to demonstrate because this is such a small room, but you can throw the cable out by just holding on one end and keeping the other end the other way. And um, 
I'm just gonna I'm gonna toss it and then and then just kind of kind of demonstrate. Hopefully, I don't, well, okay, this isn't the line of fire. Let me move that out of the way because uh, it might break for other reasons if we do that. Okay, so if I throw it, it throws straight. That's the point. Like you heard it hit the other room. Look at how straight the cord is. No kinks, no knots, no nothing. Just perfectly straight cord. And that's from over-undering it every time when I wrap it up. Over, under. And some people over-under a little bit different than I do. But it works. I learned that on a gig one time, and it, it saved that first act cable. I've probably been using that for like six years or something. So um, it's, it's worth doing if, if you want to look into it. Yeah, over-under is a good, good thing for sure. I agree with you, Christopher. Uh, oh, that's cool. Now I was just talking about the, the plastic wind instruments. I've seen some some plastic or some sort of plasticky material, trombones, trumpets, even a saxophone, I think. And there may have even been a tuba, but I'm you know, don't quote me on that one. But there's some interesting ones. Yeah, Al Alan's got it, the P bones. Yeah, I know what you're, I know what you're talking about. Those are pretty cool. Oh man. It's a Zeno Tesla. I'm, I'm surprised that many of you guys know about under over undering, but it's a really good thing to, to keep your cables going. Um, that other cable that I use, the reason I'm not sure if it's good or not is because um, I probably had the other one longer than I've been over undering, which if I've been over undering that one for six years, that other cable lasted for a long time as well. They need to make plastic bases. I, uh, I want to say they, they probably do. You know, um, Kala makes plastic ukuleles. If they made a plastic U-base, that would be kind of interesting. I know they have the paddle base thing that has one string. That's probably plastic, but uh, I don't, I don't, I don't know. They might have discontinued it. It seems like a children's instrument, a child instrument, or something. But um, yeah, so um, so I, I don't know about the plastic bases, but I mean, if you have the polyurethane strings on something that Kala already makes. For the, ukule for the ukuleles, they have the Waterman, so they're supposed to be like waterproof um, instruments. It wouldn't sound too great, and it wouldn't have the best intonation, but it might be kind of fun anyway if they would make those. That would be interesting. I love bass instruments, so I would absolutely love a trombone. Yeah, they do They do make the, um, the P-bones, like you saw them out. Awesome, guys. Well, thank you all so much for hanging out. It's getting kind of late, so I'm going to go ahead and let you all go, and I will talk to you guys next week. So far, it seems like this is still holding up. So I'm imagining it'll be fine for two hours. We'll have to see where it's at tomorrow. Yeah, that's just glue. That's not a crack. Just checking. Okay. And also I'm leaning against the wall. So technically that might put pressure the opposite way. We'll just see what happens. Thank you all for hanging out and, um, and just enjoying it. Oh man, snap. That'd be funny, but I mean, not funny because I'd like that instrument to, to be there a little bit longer. But y'all have a great one. I'll see you on Tuesday for the next video and Thursday next week for the live stream and uh, the final conclusion on if that stayed for the whole week or not. All right. Bye, guys.